Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Everybody. Hello. Welcome back to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hi, Natasha, if you don't know. I'm Debbie. My beautiful wife. My, my beautiful wife. wife. You're more beautiful. Hey, you are. Oh, dear. <laughs> thanks for uh thanks for joining us today um if you're new to the channel um you know just a couple quick things we are doing some reaction videos to the united kingdom and um we're finally getting to ireland um we're gonna learn and unfortunately it's not gonna be a happy topic by any means no um but it's uh the troubles uh this is about northern ireland mm -hmm. um but before we go on and get into more of that a couple quick things um please like the video of course if you do like the video yes and um consider subscribing to our channel um, now, I'm going to say a couple things that are going to be a little bit maybe surprising to some of the people that watch our video. Kind of going to throw out a disclaimer. And we've had this conversation. We had. Debbie's kind of delegated me to say the whole thing and might add a little bit of her yeah. stuff to yes. it if she wants. So a few things here we want to just lay out. And, and we feel like this is sad that we have to do this. But unfortunately, this is the world. <laughs> and this is the internet. You put yourself out there, you should expect certain things to happen. And we're not dumb. We get that. So here's how it goes. Um, we're trying to learn. It's just that simple. We're coming from a place of education um, mm -hmm. to learn about things. We're learning about the United Kingdom. You know, we're Americans. We know a lot more stuff about America. Not that we don't know about other countries and things, but definitely not as much, of course, as you guys do. And we certainly would expect that you would feel the same about our country. Yeah. But we're trying to learn stuff. And having said that, there have been some pretty rough comments um, on a lot of our videos, unfortunately, mm -hmm. being dismissive and... Um, you know, just being rude. Uh, there's been very anti-American comments and anti-me and her personal attacks. Right. Um, a lot of homophobic comments. These are not going to be tolerated. We're here to learn. And anybody that bashes people for learning, what does that say about you? Right. You write a negative comment in someone's YouTube video when they're generally trying to learn something because they have an interest in your country, an interest in whatever maybe, and you see something negative to that person, do you think they really want to continue learning? Think about the kids, the youth of today that might want to be doing the same thing. You're, you're hurting them and you're making yourself look like a complete idiot too. So it doesn't personally hurt our feelings because we have thick skin we do. and we're not children, but there are children that watch videos like this. I'm asking you to really generally think why make negative comments about something that you may not agree with, or you might be upset right. someone's learning about. We generally block people that make these comments. I'm only throwing that out there because you know, we want to learn about these things and we should be encouraging learning. It's not yeah. going to stop us. So you can try as you want, as you want to. It's not mm -hmm. going to stop us, but we're, we're going to get into this video here. And this is, this is going to be a tough watch. It's a hot topic. We're not coming here with, you know, any sort of prejudices or any ill intentions except to learn about this situation. Exactly. You know, most of you are great people and we love mm -hmm. you. We love the people of the North, Northern Ireland. We love people of the Republic of Ireland. We love people in England, people in Wales, people in Scotland. And I know I'm forgetting people, and it's not intentional, All but the people. we love people in general that are kind and good. Yes. Watch us learn. Help us learn. You know, these videos don't get all of the subject that we're covering. That's true. We know it's just a touch of whatever they're covering. It doesn't get it all. And a lot of times you guys do provide great comments. Yeah, you guys do. Your insight's and, better, I think, than most of the videos. Right. <laughs> right. So you help us to learn. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. That's what we like. Yes. Help us to learn more. Don't, you know, jump on us for, for us trying to learn. Saying something right. Yeah, and we're not here just for subscribers. We always put that in the videos. So of course we'd like to have more people. But we don't want people just to subscribe just because, oh, look, they did a comedian video. So we want to prank. Sorry, it's probably not going to be something we do anymore. We really hope you understand that. And I've seen it on other reactors for like music stuff. I've seen a lot of negative comments to people. And it just hurts my heart to see that. People mm -hmm. are trying to learn. Embrace that. And again, most of you do. So please, most of you don't think we're talking about you. We know who you guys are. And yes. we love you guys. You are part of a family to us. And keep in mind, the United Kingdom... We're Americans. We're cousins. That's we're right. family. And so we need to make sure we embrace each other. Thank you to those loyal subscribers and people on our Facebook page. Um, we always say we, we love you so very much because we know you care. And, um, you know, that's what we're going to say. As far as this video, we're going to get into it here. Um, again, we have no, we're just watching this to learn. 
Absolutely. That's all. And there are two parts to this video. We're only going to do the first part. I'm not sure if we'll do the second part. Um, we'll either maybe do it later or we might do it on our own, but I'm not sure yet because I haven't seen the first one. So let's dive into this video. <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot to hit the play button. <laughs> Oh, diddly dee, a leprechaun put a bum in me potato. Ah! Now, with all the Irish people having been disgusted and left, we can start. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Feature History, featuring the impatiently awaited and source of much pester, the Troubles. A rather understated name for a 30 year long period of sectarian violence at its finest. It formed both the issues and the culture of our contemporary Northern Ireland, and is such a relevant topic today, you can expect many, many unwanted opinions in the comments. Enough about that though, we have two videos worth of controversy to get through here, and now. And later when the second part goes up. For the source of the troubles you can go all the way back to 1169, with the Norman wow. conquest of Ireland. But for the sake of brevity, I'm going to try to rush to the 20th century. Irish leaders for many centuries would struggle politically with English kings, and this peaked with the Protestant Reformation that saw the majority of England turn Protestant with their monarchy, and the majority of Ireland remain Catholic. A rebellion in the late 16th century saw new efforts to assimilate the Irish, by just replacing who the Irish were. Protestant English and Scottish were sent to Ireland to attempt to colonise the island, and saw success in the north, or as it is otherwise known by, Ulster. The following English Civil War and Glorious Revolution would see the Irish Catholics ally with the losing side, leading to penal laws being placed on them by the Protestant English Parliament. During the Great French Wars, the French would provoke a Protestant-led rebellion for Irish independence, which caused the British government to claim Ireland as a core part of their kingdom and bring them under further control. Concessions would be made with the Catholic emancipation in 1829, but it did little to improve their position. The damage had been done and many Catholics were still made to live on the poorer land. A turning point would be the decimation caused by the Irish Potato Famine in 1845. Mm. One million deaths exacerbated by British mismanagement caused the Irish to demand for an Irish Parliament. Some demanded for full Irish independence, but the most popular movement was that of Home Rule. It'd see a self-governed Ireland within the United Kingdom. Its bill would finally be passed in 1912, much to the scrutiny of the mostly Protestant Ulster loyalists in the North. It did however be placed on hold given the outbreak of the First World War. Some more radical Irishmen would come out against British rule in 1916, dubbed the Easter Rising. It did fail, but when the insurrectionists were executed by the government, the rebels would become martyrs. Their fringe movement turned to public outrage. 73 members of the Irish Republican Party, Sinn Féin... I'm just sitting here thinking, like, is that it? As far as the potato famine, is that the only thing that they're going to mention on that? Because I expected, I, when I was in um, high school, I, I did a little bit um, of like research. I think I wrote a paper or something on potato famine. It's been so long, <laughs> I can't really remember it. Um, I just remember about famine and death, of course, a lot of people dying. Um, but I do remember it being quite horrible and scary and just a horrible time. But I expected to hear more than just the mention of it. <laughs> Um, but yeah. maybe it's just a quick thing for the video, but still, I just, I don't know. It seemed like that was a... Very glossed over just there. A bigger deal in my history classes than what this is. Well, I mean, of course, this is a I history know, class a, versus a video, yeah. A but... Quick video. I so. expected more on that. Um, and it's... I don't know. Hopefully I'm getting it right. Right now, I'm kind of seeing that it's... At least this video is saying it's more over just religion. Or maybe that's just a blanketed way of kind of yeah. I don't think covering everything else that was going on. Limited to zero knowledge here in the comments, please correct me if I'm wrong. Definitely, religion I think has something to do with a lot of the problems. Mm -hmm. I don't know the right words, problems, troubles, the situation. I don't know, um, but I think a lot of that too has to do with Protestants were more considered. Tell me if I'm wrong on this, guys. British. And Catholics were more considered like Republic of Ireland. Yeah. So I think it's more of like a loyalty thing than it really truly was a religion thing. Now, I could be completely wrong about this, but in your mm -hmm. comments, please educate us on that. Um, that's right. just this this person's guess from the little bit of stuff that I researched back in 25 years ago. <laughs> so 
Um, but I've always had a very strong interest in Ireland, and I'm just like, just like the island yes. of Ireland. If that if that works, um, to not try to be overly political here with this, just to make sure I cover like the entire Ireland, not mm-hmm. just the northern part or the Republic. Yeah. But I'm saying I used to look at books, picture books, and things because it's such a beautiful island, really? stunning to me. Oh, so, nice. but let's get back to this and uh, see where we're going with this. Actionists were executed by the government. The rebels would become martyrs. Their fringe movement turned to public outrage. 73 members of the Irish Republican Party, Sinn Féin, would be elected to the British Parliament in 1918 and would refuse to attend the Parliament in London, instead choosing to form an Irish Parliament in Dublin in 1919. This action would spark the War of the Independence that saw the Irish Republican Army brought together to fight for, well, an Irish Republic. The Anglo-Irish Treaty drawn up in 1921 would see a partitioned Ireland, one to be split between the mostly Catholic Nationalist South and the mostly Protestant Loyalist North. However, there was a catch, as there was a significant Catholic minority present in Northern Ireland. There was also a substantial amount of people generally not pleased with the treaty, refusing to recognise the compromised Irish Free State, and certainly refusing to recognise a British Northern Ireland. The stem of the IRA would break off as the anti-treaty IRA and fight in a civil war, only to be put down in 1923 and have the Free State be affirmed. These wars had caused a drift in Northern Ireland, the Protestant majority now suspected and occasionally feared the Catholic minority, who had grown to see the Protestants as oppressive and tyrannical. Over the course mm. of several decades, segregation became normalised between the two communities. In hiring, education and housing, Protestants wow. and Catholics rarely mixed. The anti-treaty IRA still existed, however dormant. So, um, yeah, just that, the whole like segregation thing, you know, um, I, I, from um, knowing about like uh, DeLorean, um, I have this watch <laughs> that I love that he got me this last year for is it an anniversary or birthday gift? It doesn't matter. It's from the DeLorean Motor Company. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I've watched the documentaries on John DeLorean, who you know founded that. Of course, he had his plant in Belfast. I don't think he watched any of these with me. Um, yeah, I don't think I, did. I have to come up with certain things to watch at home when she's mm, sleeping or whatever it may be. <laughs> that she, I feel like she won't care about this. Um, typically, we watch everything together. But um, I've seen documentaries about this in the past, but like that plant was, um, I want to say 8081, um, someone in the comments, correct me. I would be interested, very interested if anybody watching this video, we don't know how many um, um, Irish uh, subscribers we have. So would, hi, <laughs> hi, um, I know we have some, um, I know we have some people up in County Antrim, which is again, mm-hmm. I shouldn't say County Antrim, that's what I was, but Antrim, where my ancestors <laughs> were living at some point in the history of this world. Um, but um, no, but I would wonder if anybody that's, that's watched this video has ever worked in that plant, the DeLorean plant. Yeah, yeah, that would be so cool. Um, but the reason I bring that up and they brought up segregation is because that plant really like changed a lot of things in that area. It was in Belfast mm-hmm. um, where it was not segregated. And for like the first time, a lot of these people were working together, Catholics and Protestants, you know, in this very, in the same plant. yeah, the same plant side. during a lot of bad things happening, obviously. Okay. And, um, I remember thinking when I was watching that, like, it almost brought a tear to my eye. Cause like hearing these people getting interviewed saying, you know, I have no problem with this gentleman, mm-hmm. you know, and it was like, it kind of seemed like it made like a big deal. I mean, I mean, obviously it did, but a big impact on these right. individuals. Yeah. And I thought that was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful seeing it. Of course, nobody wants to see anybody segregated for any reason ever in the history of life. You know, America has a horrible America has a horrible history of slavery, not one we were proud of by any means. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, things are not that way anymore. But you know, civil rights movement, there's some similarities here and that. Yes. But at the same time, you know, that we're still going and learning and growing. I think every country does that. But you know, it's just I just thought that was interesting when they brought that up. That reminded me about that. Mm-hmm. And I would just be very interested if anybody here, you know, has ever worked in those plants and had any sort of yeah. um, connection or noticed, you know, what I'm bringing up here. Like, hey, you know, because I feel like it did help maybe a little bit, at least with the, the folks that worked in the factory. I, I don't know. Yeah. But I thought that was quite interesting. So let's go back to this. You ready? Yep. Yeah. It had begun to see an influx of Marxists, much to the annoyance of the older, more traditional members. In the early 60s, Northern Ireland became subject to a civil rights movement, set on highlighting the inequalities in the province. 
Staunch loyalists feared it as an IRA front, a facade made to lead to a united Ireland. Civil right protests began to lead to riots, as both mm. partisan loyalists and the Royal Ulster Constabulary wished to crack down upon them. This led to a great number of Catholics rejecting the RUC's authority, attempting to create their own institutions, as seen in the self-declared autonomous area of Free Dairy. Tensions mm. had been rising steadily since 1966, and would climax in 69. A Protestant parade was set to move through a Catholic area of London Dairy, or Dairy, or whatever you want to call it so you don't get mad. Protestants and Catholics would initially begin slinging any old crap at each other, leading to clashes. As the police moved in to crack down, battles erupted. This is known as the Battle of the Bogside. Hundreds of police and civilians were injured in the riots, and the officers of the constabulary would be pushed from the Bogside area. By the third day of rioting, things had become intense and the Northern Irish Prime Minister requested British troops to relieve the officers. A battalion would intervene as a neutral force to separate the residents from the police and bring an end to the battle. With the news of the battle spreading quickly, agitated Irish nationalists began to break out in protest, and the Ulster Loyalists, fearing a total uprising, began to clash with nationalists, causing widespread violence across Northern Ireland. With an overwhelmed and accusedly biased constabulary not of much help, the British Army would have some serious trouble maintaining law and order. The Army had initially been welcomed as a neutral force into the Troubles. The Nationalists and Loyalists both believed the Army was there to protect them from the other. As the violence continued, however, some Nationalists began to believe too little was being done to quell the violence against them. The divide in the population was clear, but beneath the surface another divide had formed. In the IRA, the traditionalist Republicans broke away from the Marxist bunch, due to the perceived unwillingness of their leaders to protect nationalist communities. This new provisional IRA would soon dwarf its paternal organisation. They had though inherited a crumbling support. Few wanted the help of a paramilitary gang. This changed when in the Battle of St Matthews in 1970, the local IRA beat back an armed loyalist mob in a shootout, serving to guard a Catholic nationalist enclave. It was a significant propaganda victory for the organisation. The British Army looked to disarm this violence. It would enter the infamous Foles Road area of Belfast, a nationalist stronghold, to seize arm dumps. They were thorough and harsh in their action, doing a significant disservice to their reputation. In the Foles Curfew, the army would come under harassment from both the IRA and angered residents, leading to the unfortunate death of four civilians. In August of 1971, the British Army and RUC would undertake Operation Demetrius, which sought to intern paramilitary members. However, their list held a strong nationalist bias, and the operation itself was subject to fumbles, leading to an upsurge in reactionary violence. Those interned reported torture. Two IRA members were killed, two soldiers had also been killed, not to mention 20 civilians. It wasn't a good look, to say the least. With nationalist support of the army at an all-time low, and the hopes of defeating the IRA militarily dashed, the soldiers would be turned to local policing, <coughs> checkpoint duty, and riot control. The unpopular policy of internment continued as well. Imprisonment without trial was seen as the only logistical way to deal with the unrest. In January of 1972, both the army and the police were deployed to oversee an anti-internment march in Derry. British paratroopers were present, and they had been despised for their role in killing 11 people during Operation Demetrius. Small groups began to lob rocks at the paratroopers, provoking the paratroopers to open fire in return. The crowd would quickly devolve into chaos, 28 people would be shot and 14 died. Given the circumstances of their deaths, the paratroopers were decried for their actions, and the British army at large felt the ire of the nationalists, Catholics and more. In what would become known as Bloody Sunday, it had put a definite end to any idea of a honeymoon. That's it. Okay. That's it. For this one. That's so sad. I really hate hearing stuff like that. Sorry. <laughs> that had to be some hard times to live through. Oh, I go back to my original statement before this video of, we love you guys. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, history isn't always pretty. No. And it's not about, I don't know, it's just not. And, uh, you know, I hope we can all learn from it. Um, and uh, just love each other. That's just so important. I think we just forget to do that sometimes. You know, it's like, let's point out each other's differences and forget to look at the similarities we have, you know? You know, I hate that this was our first 
look into um, anything re re involving uh, Ireland here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't, I don't want to skim over this though. No. You know, and I know there's another part to the video. I don't know if we're going to do that. Comments, let us know if you want us to do part two. Um, this was emotional for me. It's a hard subject. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Um, don't like fighting and war and violence and no, hate it. Disruption and hate unrest. It. Hate it. Just you know, I just I want that world. We all want that world, don't we? We, do. we all want that world where it's just like we're all cool, we're all okay. Well, we can all get along. History is important, and learning about this is important to us. Mm -hmm. We 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 can't know the entire United Kingdom if we don't know as much as possible about what's going on, what's happened. We respect we respect your cultures. We respect your histories. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we hope that you'll give us that same courtesy of respect. Yes. And in fact, I don't see that you know, as a courtesy so much. It's just like it's common just, sense. Yeah. But either way, um, you know, we love our subscribers. We love our YouTube family. We love our Facebook mm -hmm. family. And uh, you guys mean a lot to us. And so, you know, doing this video was very um, something we were actually cautioned against. Yes. But you know, we threw caution to the wind and said, you know what, we want to learn. So we're gonna do it. Um, and I'll be interested to see how that goes in the comments section. But we we appreciate you guys. Um, we thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back Wednesday with um, some different content. And, and please note too, we're not gonna just this isn't it. Like we're not gonna dip out. Like oh, we did one video on Ireland and Northern Ireland again. I'm just sorry for the blankets. The island of Ireland. Uh, we're gonna still do like a a, a video, like a tourist yeah. video too. Um, so we're gonna still do that. And we have some other things up our sleeves as well. But um, as always in the comments, please leave us suggestions of things you'd like to see us do. Um, we always take them into consideration and sometimes you bring up stuff that we would never think to. That's right. We don't know. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, um, you know, we appreciate you and uh, love each other and we'll see you soon. That's right. Until next time. Bye guys.